we're going to cover everything about the sluice box. But before I head up in the hills, I want to talk about sluice boxes in general first, because uh, there's all kinds of different manufacturers. Uh, some of them I really like, some not so much, but they all work, and they all work fairly well. Otherwise, nobody would buy them. Now, the things you want to consider when you're, you're looking at a sluice box, number one, how far do you got to carry it? Number two, how much material you're planning on running through it. Uh, what I mean is, if you're going to be running a lot of material and it's not that far, well then, you don't want a little box like this. You want a, a big four foot box. You want a flare on the front. The, the flare allows you more area to dump your material. It gathers more water, so you can get more water through the box and you can process a lot more gravel little box like this if you're hiking way back in there yeah this might be a way to go uh one thing i don't like about this box i'm gonna have to fix it doesn't have a handle i really like handles on sluice boxes one thing i want to discuss before we head up there is the ripples in a sluice box i get i get a lot of questions on that and apparently there's, there's some confusion so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the difference between the ripples in a sluice box, a high banker, and a dredge. In the sluice box, you have the ripple height is very low because in a sluice box, you don't have a lot of velocity. So you gotta keep it down and the angle is fairly flat, a lot flatter than it is in a high banker or a dredge because that allows the rocks to get over the riffle a lot easier. And since you don't have the velocity, you don't need a large riffle to make create a dead area for your gold to drop into. A high banker runs more water than a sluice, but less water than a dredge. Your angle is a little steeper than the, uh, sluice box and your height is a little bit higher uh, you can get away with a steeper angle because you do have more flow so the larger rocks can get over the riffles but you need the extra height and a little steeper angle to give you that dead water to catch your gold now in the dredge you have a very sharp angle here it's actually past a 45 you're quite a bit higher, I would say almost twice as high from the mat to the top of the riffle. Um, so you, in a, in a dredge, you're running a lot of water. So you need this height and angle to create a sharp roll to give your golden area to drop out into. Another thing I get a lot of questions on is what type of matting to put in the box. Uh, myself personally, I like the miner's moss, but over the years I've used burlap, I've used old rugs, I've used the miner moss, and I've used no matting, just the rubber mats. And uh, like I say, I pre prefer the miner's moss myself. And then another thing real quick is the black matting at the front of the box. So this allows you to see the gold as you're working to where if, you, if this is just all aluminum, it's really hard to see any gold because it won't get caught up here. So basically all this does is allows you to dump a pan, look, and see if you can see some gold. Uh, doesn't help on the recovery at all. It's just quicker to see how you're doing at the time. Okay, well, I'm gonna throw this in the Jeep because where we're going, is a bit of a hike and I'm not packing that big one. All right, I'll see you at the river. Well, I don't know if you guessed it yet or not, but it's the next day. Morning all, we're up on the river. Well, I wouldn't call it a river. Well, the river's right there, but we're on a small creek that feeds the river. So this is normally dry in the summer, so this is where we're going to do a little sluicing today. 
Got a sluice box. Now I know there's gold in this gully because it, I don't know how well the camera's showing it, but behind me there is rock stacked all the way up this creek. There's rock stacked on both sides. So they worked this little gully who knows when. But we know they didn't work it for free, so there's gold in here because they worked it quite a ways up which tells me they were finding gold. Otherwise, they wouldn't have went that far. Okay, well, I'm gonna get this box set up and uh, I'll show you how we set the box up. I'm gonna try to explain best as I can why I picked this spot. I don't know how well it's showing it, but there is virtually a bedrock wall right there. And on this side where all these boulders are, the bedrock, right behind the camera's bedrock. They pretty much stack these rocks on bedrock. Well, the gully, the gully as you go upstream is very narrow. And it, I mean, it's literally three foot from where they stack rocks to where they stack rocks. Well, this is the first spot where it opens up. Well, we're not sure what kind of gold's in here. If it was fine gold, we're not going to find much in that real narrow spot because it's just going to blow the stuff out of there. Here it has a chance to open up, slow down, drop a lot of gravel. The downside of this is we can't get to the bedrock here. I don't know how far down it is, but these boulders are too big to move. But this will give us a good idea if there's fine gold in here or if we, if we can't find any gold, then we know they were, they were picking up heavier gold and we got to get to the bedrock. But right here, we got a good spot to set the sluice box up. Now it's going to take a little bit of work. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now when you're setting your sluice box up, there's a, there's a couple of things that are mandatory and there's a few things that are, will make your life a lot easier. One thing that's mandatory is your drop. You start at about an inch per foot of your box. So this box is two foot long. So basically the discharge end has to be two inches lower than the, where the water comes in. Now that's where you start. You find a just depending on the size of gold, the, the type of, there's a lot of variables, but that's where you start. And if your box is loading up with uh, material, you can increase it a little. It's actually pretty hard to lose gold in a sluice box. Uh, basically, the only way you can really do it is overload it where the, the ripples aren't exposed, and then your gold can bounce right on out. But once the gold is behind a ripple, down in the, the moss, it's pretty hard to get it out. The other thing that's right on the, the mandatory is water flow. Ideally, you want your box at least half full. Uh, you can vary that quite a bit, but for the box to, to run efficiently, you gotta have it at least half full. And then the third thing is your discharge. You don't wanna set it up where you have to deal with the discharge. Um, if you're setting it up in a, in a flat area and you run it for a while, your discharge starts building up into your box, then you got to stop what you're doing, go back, dig that gravel out of the way, and then go back. It costs you production. So this situation right here, I've got two feet before I got to deal with uh, the discharge. So if I get the box set up here, I don't have to worry about the discharge side. You have to get the water where it's coming into the box straight. And in a situa situation like this, that can be difficult with all the boulders. So we're just gonna have to play with it. So I'm gonna grab some tools, start digging out a spot here, see if I can get this box set up. Now my plan is to get the box set up right here. This is the best shot I got at having water coming in straight. 
So we got to build us a little platform to put the box on. Okay, now I can block off the water and use the water kind of like a uh, level gauge. And looks like right about there is level. So I need to bring this end up a couple of inches. We've got it pretty good. Now what we'll do is we'll just take the gold pan, dig some gravel and just pour this area to fill up all the leaks. But we gotta get more water. So we're gonna see if we can bring this water that's running out that way over to our box. We're pretty good on this side. And now that I've got the box set up, water flowing through it, there's a few things that we've got to check to uh, make sure we're going to optimize our recovery. Now, the fact that we've got all the water in the creek running through the box, but it's not quite enough, the box is only like a quarter full. Now, that is going to slow things down. It, it won't affect our gold recovery. It's just going to make it a lot slower than it should be because we're not going to be able to feed in the, the gravel as fast and we're going to have to remove the rocks because there's not enough flow to go ahead and roll the rocks out. So it is going to slow down the production, but not the recovery. Okay, now let me show you what we got to check to make sure we got the box set up correctly. You can see that there is a V in the water coming into the box. It goes, comes from the two corners right here and right here and is running both ways up to the center, up to the first uh, ripple there. Now you want to make sure that that V is in the center of your box. Now the reason that V is important is that tells you whether or not your water's coming in the box straight. If it's not coming in, if that V goes to one side or the other, then that means one side of your box has fast water, whichever side the V is heading towards, that side is running faster than the other side, and it's just like the river. Uh, when you have water that's slower than the, the main body of water, that will cause a buildup of gravel and such. That's how you, you end up with your gravel bars. Well, you don't want that in your sluice box. You want a straight, even flow so you have no buildup in the sluice box. And that V will tell you. Now, to tell if your box is level from side to side, you need to grab a handful of gravel and uh, preferably lighter material. Uh, you don't want to use rocks, you want to use sand and such as such. And you pour that in your box and then you just watch as it goes through. And if it all runs to one side, then it tells you that your box isn't level because one side will have deeper water, one side will have shallower water, and that will be a different flow rate. And your, your gravel or your sand will tell you that. So I'm gonna grab a handful of uh, sand somewhere around here, and we'll pour it in the box and check that out. Now this stuff is pretty muddy, so it's gonna make it hard to see, but we'll, we'll find out. And now you'll notice this side is clear and this side is still working to be clear. We are building up a little bit of gravel. So our box is tilted a little bit, so we need to straighten it just a hair. Actually flowing through there pretty good now. Now I'm not sure if the camera's showing it, but you can see we have a buildup of gravel behind the riffle. But we have clean 
mat behind it towards the back. Now, what I try to shoot for is I want one third of the area between the ripples having build up a sand. And then I want the back of the ripple clear. Then the next ripple you want to build up, then clear. That way you know your ripples are working. If you can't see any matting, then you know you're, you're uh, running too slow. If most all the ripples empty, well then you know you're running pretty darn fast. Right now, it's just a hair on the fast side. So I'm gonna take a rock and take the end up just a little bit, not much. Okay, well we've now taken care of the, the things that are required on the sluice box. It's level, the water's coming in straight, it's got a good flow, but not too much. We got a, a great area for dumping. Uh, like I say, the only thing that's wrong with this setup is I wish we had a little more water, but it's working pretty good. So now we just got to find some gold. So I'm going to start doing a little digging around, see what we can come up with. We got bedrock right here. Bedrock comes down and right here, it flattens out. When I look upstream, the river's making a slight bend right here. So this is on the inside, not much, but a little bit. But more than anything, this is one of the few spots where I got a little shelf of exposed bedrock. So we got some cracks in here. So we're gonna dig out the gravel I'm, my, I'm kneeling on. We're gonna clean out these cracks and just see if there's any uh, gold in this, stuck in this bedrock. Well, got our first pan of material. Let's go run it through the box. First thing we wanna do is just wash off our big rocks. And since we don't have the flow, we're not gonna run them through the box. And same thing with these roots. We want to wash them off best we can. Okay, let's dump some of this in here. Now we can pretty much mess around up here all we want. But you want to stay away from sticking your fingers in between the ripples. Up here, doesn't matter. So we just keep filling her up. Okay, we got our, another pan from a little bit different spot. Since we haven't found any gold yet, we're Still exploring. Now I can, I can see in here at the trailing edge, you can see the black sand. And this spot has a little more black sand than the last one. And the gravel is heavier because it's not washing out as quick. So that's a good sign. We got some rocks here though we gotta wash off. Now when you dump it in like that, it won't hurt your recovery at all as long as you make sure that your ripples are still open. Now if you're dumping in so much that you can't see ripples, then you're you are overloading and that will cost you gold. Quite a bit of black sand in that that pan, and I see a few specks of fine gold. This is our third pan from the, the one side, and then uh, we're gonna go over and take uh, three pans off the other side and see if there's any difference. Okay, let's go grab some gravel from the other side. One thing that's been bothering me though is this creek is just 
full of busted up bedrock. I mean, everywhere you look, you know, there's, there's worn river gravel in here, but then there's also just tons of busted bedrock, sharp busted bedrock. It tells me the old timers broke the bedrock. Now, I'm not sure if they broke the bedrock to get a, a good clean channel to run their box in, or if the majority of the gold was down in the cracks in the bedrock and they busted the bedrock to get the gold. If that's the case, we're gonna have a hard time finding gold in the gravel. But either way, we're gonna finish our three pans from each side, so let's run the first one. Now this material has a lot more dirt in it, so we gotta make sure we get all that dirt broke up before we dump it in the box. Otherwise, it'll just roll on out as a piece of dirt. Okay, let's see if our, our second pan didn't produce anything. Or anything I've seen, let's check our last one. All right, well, since this is supposed to be a uh, sluicing video, not a gold finding video, let's clean this sluice box out. Now, if we would have bought, brought a bucket, cleaning the sluice much easier because just stick the bucket in the end and just dump it in there. But we don't have a bucket, all we have is a pan, so you got to be a little more careful. And you always start by stopping the flow in the box, and the way you stop the flow is by raising the back of the box. If you can, you need to find a pond with still water or as still as you can get to wash everything out in. Now here, this is the worst of the worst situations. We have no ponds, we have no still water. So we're just gonna have to either create one or work with what we got. Now there is a spot right here and we have a spot right in front of the sluice box, but once I pull that sluice box, that water is gonna wash our little dam away and we're gonna lose that spot. So right now, the main thing is I'm gonna get the box out of the river. You can get to it, then you slowly pick up the back of the box until your flow stops. Okay, we have no flow now. Now we will remove the box, take it over to, the, to our gold pan, and then let it drain into the gold pan. Okay. Now what I like to do is dump all the water out of the box into the gold pan and now we can handle the box pretty confidently that we're not going to lose any gold. Okay, now what we got to do is find a spot where we can clean this out and I'm going to see if I can dam this up a little bit and see if we can do it right here. Okay, we got us a, a small pond right here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull the ripples up and get our matting out. I wanna wash our ripples off so we don't throw anything away. Okay, now we can take and just roll that matting out of there. Okay, now best we can, be nice to have uh, two boxes or two pans, but we don't. Okay, now I'm going to turn this over, clean that, get our mat down here cleaned. 
Okay, we got the box clean. Now we'll turn our moss upside down and we'll wash it. I always like to take a look, make sure we're not leaving a nice piece of gold. I always like to put my box back together before I start the panning. That way I don't go off and leave any of my, my matting or my bolt or anything as far as the box goes. Okay, now we'll pan this out, see how we did. Now well, we're getting down to nothing but black sand. We got quite a bit of black sand. I haven't seen any gold yet though. Okay. Let's take a look. Oh, I see one little piece. There's two. Oh, we got a little bit of gold in there. Now let me clean this up a little bit more. We got one that might be a loose standard picker. Looking at this gold, even the fine pieces are on the chunky side. So my guess is there's not a lot of fine gold in this creek, but they were finding nice pieces and you got to go to bedrock to get it. That's why the bedrock is totally destroyed in here. Okay, let me show you what we got. We're going to call that one a loose standard picker. But all in all, not too bad, but you can see that the gold is fairly you know, for flakes, they're not real flat. Well, I don't think I made it to, to my uh, two grams today. But uh, I've been wondering about this creek for quite a while. And now I know, well, I kind of really already knew there was gold in here because they really worked it. Problem is, I got to figure out how to move semi, several semi-loads of uh, big boulders to get to it. Okay, well, what do you say we uh, pack everything up, head back to the house, and we might have enough there to weigh. We'll find out. Okay, see you back at the house. I made it back to the house, and uh, believe it or not, it's the same day. It's kind of late, and I really don't like uh, shooting uh, videos after sunsets because I don't have anything for lighting. Lighting sucks. And I normally use the windows, but I got to get this video done so I can get it posted. So, got to work for what you got. Okay, well, let's jump over and see how we did, see if there's enough there to weigh. Okay, let's see if we can make the scale move. 0, 0.25. Well, I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> A quarter of a gram, and just goes to show you those that is fairly chunky gold for being so small. Okay, well, I'm gonna cut this short because this video is already way too long. So I'm out of here. You guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video.